up my Jeep Wrangler. Let's see if I let light in here. Well, that doesn't make it any clearer, does it? There you go. My Sekane H201G and my Jeep Wrangler using my DJI gimbal with my S10 Plus. I'm going to try something. I have this little contraption here plugged up. This is my Aver Media, which is what I use to record video games with. It's running through this shitty little converter through this mixed wires. It's not really the right way to record the screen. I'm also going to record it with this camera, of course. Now, when I recorded it a minute ago, I did a little test video and it looked like shit. So I don't know if it's the what those cords hooked up to the back of the H2-1G say cane head unit is just to power a, an external monitor like if you had a monitor in the back seat or something so I don't know what kind of, I don't know if that's the bad quality or the doodad from all the connections are the bad quality either way uh, I'm going to try to overlay that video over here so you can see it and if it doesn't uh, if it looks like shit I'll just use this one right I may dip back and forth in case it's not clear so so this is Nova Launcher I have installed here. Uh, if you want to see my settings, you can use the default one. I don't want, I don't like the default one as much as this. So this is just how I have Nova Launcher set up. Desktop grid four by four, icon layout 125%, no padding, and I don't remember how many of these things I changed from the default. App drawer layout, I have 5x4 and vertical app drawer. And you can just set that as your home screen once you install it from the Play Store. Uh, so, I don't like that regular layout. So if you buy your Sekane head unit, it won't have that set up. It'll be looking different, but you can just install it from the Play Store. So as you can tell, I'm connected to Wi-Fi from my home on my guest network, Stranger Danger. So we're just going to go through the settings. So even though it looks different now, the settings are essentially going to be the same. Well, first we'll go through the apps, right? This is uh, Nova doing that, putting the most used apps here. We'll start up here. A2D, A2DP. That's if you connected Bluetooth. I have a whole video on that, so that would be your Bluetooth audio. I have a different phone currently. I was originally doing it with my Note 9, and now I have this uh, OnePlus phone. So the Note 9 is not currently hooked up, obviously. Amplifier, that's how you change your tones, right? So for EQ purposes, uh, I don't know how clear this is shown, but there's a rock setting, pop setting, jazz setting, classic, flat, voice, custom, which you could you know move however you wanted to and it wouldn't maintain it, or rock, again. And then that's the loudness button. Personally, uh, I like the rock the best. And then there's a fader, in case you want to move it from section to section. You can do a driver preference. Rear preference, front preference, or all are set individual for the user. So that was A2T, A2DP for Bluetooth uh, music. Uh, amplifier, APK, APK installers, if you had an app you wanted to install. Something outside of the Play Store. You could do that. AVN, that would be if you had something you want to input from here uh, like if you had uh, an extra camera or something hooked up I have a rear view camera hooked up but it doesn't go here that goes to a different set of wires as you can see the backup camera works just fine I have a boot video where I show how it boots how fast it is to boot up and how the camera works and all that so there'll be a link to that Bluetooth would be for phone calls you can see my note 9 there it's not connected, so they're not going to work other than the settings. But I have a whole separate video on that. And I go into much more detail on the Bluetooth phone calls. It's a calculator in case you want to do some math in your Jeep, which I always do all the time. I'm doing sine and cosine, of course. Calendar, if you want to look at your Google Calendar. Chrome, obviously a browser. Clock is like standard Android clock stuff. If you wanted to have an alarm clock in here, you could. If you wanted to have a timer set. You could. Sander stuff, right? Alright, so there's DuckTales. I have a separate video on that. Uh, you can watch that as well. 
DVR. That would be if you hooked up a DVR uh, controller on here or a DVR camera. I have a short video on one of those. Um, on like a $20 one or the more expensive one. I never got around to hooking up. But in theory, it would work. Easy connection. That's if you wanted to plug your phone in. Now, this is what a lot of people are concerned with. I don't have any use for this because I have an Android head unit. If I wanted to plug my phone in and mirror the screen there, easy connection would do it. But I don't have any... That's not how I want this to work. I want this to be my head unit. I don't want to mirror my phone. Right? That's all, to me, that's the whole benefit of having the Android head unit, which we'll go through as we get further into this. File browsers are built-in browser, right? Just a simple file setup. Galleries, if you have pictures you saved on here, I don't have any pictures on here. Google, obviously, Google search app. GPS info, that's a built-in app for say game that just tells you where your, if your GPS is working. So, that works good. I'm going to blur that out so you don't try to find my house. Google Maps works just fine. Um, again, i got to blur this out so no one comes and stalks me. So here's what I always try to tell people that if you have, if you're on Wi-Fi, you can go to your offline maps and you can download a map. So I have like a large section of Kentucky downloaded. Alright, so select. So if you wanted to just go to Google Maps and search for, like I'm in Louisville, Kentucky, so I can just download my entire city. I'm downloading stuff in the background, so it's going to run a little slow. So I'm not always on Wi-Fi. I used to have a hotspot in here, but I took it out. So you can see, if you scroll up, there's a download option, so you can download your whole city. It's only going to take 65 megabytes. You need to redo this download every 30 days. So download started and we'll continue in the background. So you can see it's downloading my offline maps. So now, if I was driving around town without Wi-Fi, if I'm driving around town without Wi-Fi, you can still search for things just fine as long as you're inside the city limits that this is being downloaded. To get Wi-Fi, like I said, I used to have a hotspot plugged into my OBD2 port. Uh, the T-Mobile Sync Up Drive. I was paying like 20 bucks for it, so now I just use my Wi-Fi hotspot on my phone. All right, if you just use like your hotspot on your phone, then it connects and it works just fine. I'm in my driveway right now and it connects to my house, so if I didn't want to mess with my phone when I came home from a trip or anywhere, you know, driving around, it'll connect to my home Wi-Fi and give it a couple minutes and it'll download. It's a little slower, obviously, because it's outside the house as opposed to in the vehicle. Uh, this one is just a thing with Android uh, where it has like the things in the background so I download this in the background just to hide these persistent notifications that I don't want so just ignore that you can do it yourself if you want MTCD tools is also a software that I downloaded I actually use the APK installer there for as well that's, that lets me map my buttons play pause button to my steering wheel control so my this button here in my steering wheel is mapped to play pause if I was listening to music, I can hit that button and then it will play my music. Play it, pause my music as opposed to just mute it. That is dependent on which CAN bus adapter you have. I've had lots of hand Android head units. I've had a SATA, I've had Say King, I've had Join. They all use different CAN bus adapters. Some of them will be like a, called Simple, some of them called like Bougie or something like that. I forget the name of them, but certain ones allow this extra button to work this one right here the vr button and it just makes a beep if it makes a beep when you press it then you can you can remap it with mtcd tools if it doesn't then you're sol music is their built-in music player so if i had music installed on the micro sd card uh, or the usb drive so in here these are i have them run from my glove box normally there is a this is a usb but I have a micro SD installed and it treats it just like a regular because there's not a micro SD card here up port on the Seikane but I have my standard micro SD card putting this adapter into the USB port and it treats it like Android would normally treat a micro SD card navigation that's just a button you can hit to map 
your navigation to whatever app you want to use that's built into the head unit itself. So I have it mapped to Google Maps. Uh, if you use the default launcher, they'll have like a navigation button, and that's what that maps to. It's pointless, really. Those two come from Noble Launcher. Google Play Music, obviously Google Play Music. The Play Store is a standard Google Play Store. If you go to My Apps and Games, you can see it, it has auto updates, and it even does this Play Protect scanning, right? And it's updating my apps, just like normal. All right, the radio, of course, is just the regular radio functionality. <laughs> Introducing the new $5 piggy bag from Wendy's. Which I don't care for. Uh, settings, we're going to go over those in detail in a little bit. Speed test and app I installed just to test my speed test. So this is connecting to my Wi-Fi in my house. So let's just test it and see how strong the Wi-Fi is. Again, the Wi-Fi antenna is buried back behind this head unit. I'm outside my house through a brick wall. And my router's in the basement. So I don't know how great the speeds will be here. Not terrible though. I mean, 25 megabits per second. Inside the house, I'm getting like 400, but I don't know how capable this Wi Fi antenna is in here. It may not even be capable of those kind of speeds, but I mean, it's pretty strong. I mean, that's you're not going to get any complaints with 30 there, right? I mean, it's not next level networking, but still pretty solid. Spotify. Uh, here's a huge complaint I have. I downloaded Spotify. It's always worked great. It became my preferred uh, device or music listening service. It became my preferred music listening service. But like, let's say I want to listen to this song. A recent update screwed the... See where it is? They used to have a big album art over here, and then I'll try to put up a screenshot in this area here, what it used to look like, and it used to look really cool. And then it kind of does this. I don't know why the update kind of boinked it here, but it uh, I don't like it. This is my biggest complaint about this head unit now, which is what, uh, it's stupid, but it's part of the reason I'm considering going to a regular Android Auto unit, because I'm really annoyed by this screen here. I don't like the visual looks of it. Uh, but Spotify works just like normal. Like if you want to go to other than the stupid album artwork, like you can go to your home settings and you can hit your download quality to very high. It's downloading to that micro SD card. All right, yeah, and then you have the app switcher button. So here's all your apps. You can see here's all the stuff I've already launched. And if you want to close them all at once. Usually there's a little rocket ship icon here. But there we go, clear all here. Alright, so now I've cleared all my apps in the background. TPMS doesn't work with this. TPMS would be if you had their extra piece to work your, to tell your, your tire pressure from your tires, but you'd have to have their adapter, whereas it still works for the Jeep. Like if you So this still works, the, the regular Jeep one still works just fine. People also always want to know, does the navigation work? Sorry, does the temperature still works and then the north setting still works? And that changes as well. Even with this head unit installed, it still works just fine. But this app on the head unit is pointless. The regular, uh, so it won't show, like if you had the, if you had the Jeep 430N on the EVIC over here, and this guy back here is the EVIC. this guy here so that won't uh, show your navigation directions but I don't think those navigation directions work with any aftermarket head unit unless maybe you got something with the Maestro RR this would work maybe with a different one I don't know video as if I had videos installed on the thumb drive it would work uh, I've played those in other head unit installs uh, it's just something personally I would never be into watching videos in my Jeep. I watch YouTube videos, not while I'm driving necessarily, but just in general. But as far as having a, a downloaded video playing in there, I would never actually use it. It works though. Waze, of course, it's just the standard Waze app, which I have installed. So yeah, Waze works just fine. Um, I'm not gonna show it, because it's gonna show my address. Will key study would be 
This doesn't do anything because I'm using their CAN bus adapter. If you use a second, uh, secondary adapter like the PAC audio unit, you can remap your steering wheel controls. You can't when you use their CAN bus adapter. Wi-Fi Nodos, that's an app I tried. I don't want that on there, let's uninstall it. That's an app I tried because there was a bug where the Wi-Fi cut off. Maybe I'll add that at the beginning of this video or the end of this, somewhere in this video so you know what I'm talking about. Just a quick video. So my Jeep has been remote started. And I've had this problem where, so the head unit comes on, but the Wi-Fi will be off. So even when I start the Jeep, Wi-Fi is off. And if I turn it on, it just, so that's my guest network, Stranger Danger. And then it turns itself off. So it's a weird bug. You gotta do it like two or three times and then finally it comes on. But it would be nice if it would come on while I remote started because then it could be downloading stuff on my home Wi-Fi before I hit the road and have to use my hotspot. Anyhow, that's still, this is on like day two or three of this head unit so I haven't updated anything, I haven't set things up yet. Uh, it does eventually work, I don't know what causes it, but so, hang on, I'll figure it out. I don't know what it is. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time. It's just happened, like as you can see, we've been in my house, the whole, we've, this video's been going the whole time and my Wi-Fi has never dipped out once. So sometimes it's when it first boots, it takes a little bit to get on Wi-Fi and it will just kind of bug and shut on and off constantly. So I'll put that video at the beginning of this and it'll make more sense. Uh, but again, it doesn't have that problem all the time, obviously. Someone on uh, XDA thought it was related to temperature, like when it's really cold outside, and obviously it's warm today, so I don't know. I can't figure it out, but once it's been running for a little bit, it works fine. And sometimes it works right off the bat, so I don't know. It's certainly not a deal killer for me. It's unpleasant sometimes, but for the most part, it works pretty good. And YouTube works just like you would expect it to. So you want to watch a great video channel like this stuff here right is it really if you want top notch that's what we're talking about you can even go to your settings turn it to dark mode right and then let's say you want to watch a great video Like say you wanted to watch Realm Royale, new video game on the Nintendo Switch. So you can switch ahead. Alright. Let's see my stellar gameplay. I got two potions. Alright, it'll work just fine. And you can wash it while you're driving if you want to. It's certainly not safe. Wouldn't highly recommend it. But there's no reason you can't. I mean, there's probably laws against it, but the radio's not going to stop you. China don't care. All right, so now let's go through the actual settings. Let's pull down here. Uh, your quick menu here, right? You can edit these just like in any Android, so you can change them out to different settings if you'd like. I don't use a lot of them. So I use my Wi-Fi, I use my Bluetooth, brightness sometimes, uh, amp and speed. This is like a, basically like a RAM management thing. It kind of kills. It'll have a little pop-up here in a second, telling you like a little toast message telling you that killed a bunch of stuff, right? It just kind of like clears your RAM, like some kind of RAM cleaner, I guess. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it does, but it, if you're running slow, you can hit that, and in theory, it should speed it up. All right, let's go through settings, deep dive time. So this is a long video, so buckle on in, buddy. We're gonna speed it up. This gimbal keeps getting out of sorts. All right, so Wi-Fi, 
pretty standard stuff. There's an on button. Hit this thing if you want to change. You can hit your Wi Fi preferences. This gives you an annoying pop up to let you know things are open. You can do all this advanced, right? Anything you want to do there. Hotspot and tethering. That would be to create a hotspot from here. I never use that. Tethering. I've never tried, so I don't know if it works or not. Airplane mode, I've never used. I, mean, I do it with my phone on the airplane, but obviously my Jeep's not going on the airplane, so I don't worry about it. Connected devices, uh, so you can check your Bluetooth, and it tells you, so this is the device name. It originally says car kit, I changed it to say key. If you watch that Bluetooth video, it shows a lot more details. And then you can pair more devices if you want to in that way. So you can either go through the settings, do it this way, or you can go through the app version. It's all the same thing. Uh, apps and permissions. So we have all my apps installed. Just like regular Android and Android, you can go in here and like, for example, I am never going to use my calendar on my Jeep. I tried that a long time ago and I never really cared for it. So you can go in here and do all the standard Android stuff. If you want to get your, uh, your data, if you want to get your storage, you can clear the cache, you can delete the data, and you can just disable the app. And now it won't show up anymore, right? Because I'm never going to use that one, right? The calculator, I'm never going to use the calculator on here. So you can even go to the storage, you can clear the cache, clear the data, disable that. And now it won't show up in your app drawer anymore, right? So the calendar is gone and the calculator is gone. You could mess some stuff up, so we'll. Be careful what you do disable. I don't want my Gmail on here, so I disabled that. And I don't want pinion input, so I disabled that. Display, we have the brightness level. That's just the standard brightness level. Wallpaper, you have Nova wallpapers and ones that are built into the device. Uh, so you can see it has a live wallpaper. So you can see my black hole going there. I'm annoyed that I didn't think about to change that earlier. I just now changed that for the first time here, which because I'm stupid. But there's some cool stuff. Like I think these are just straight up from Seikane. It looks pretty good. The screen's pretty good. I don't remember if I said this when the video cut off or not before, but I find the screen on the Seikane to look better than the Deceda. Uh, my Deceda may have been bad because it had like a blue tint to it, but in general, the Seikane, the screen looks pretty good. I gotta say, especially for the 10 inch screen. I mean, it's a pretty crystal clear display. It's gonna look like shit on this recording, probably because the camera and then going through this device and more so probably this little uh, adapter hookup I have here so it's not the best scenario all right so display wallpaper like I said you can do that you can do the live wallpapers or any number of them work uh, they look pretty cool font size I crank it up to large because it's a tennis display so you want to see you know your stuff you can make it bigger or small if you want but I like large displays night display is very useful so uh, at nighttime obviously you don't want it cranked up the way it determines night is if you turn on the headlights so watch when I turn so you can see now the headlights are off because these are dark. These capacitive buttons I'll call on the side here, your power button. Power didn't really turn it off, it just turns the screen off. It says it's shutting down, but it's not really shutting down. Watch as soon as I hit power, it comes back on. So it didn't really shut off. Home is, of course, home, back is back, and volume or volume. There's a little reset hole that you can put like a, if it ever freezes it up, you can stick a paper clip or something in there. It doesn't factory reset, it just does a hard reboot of the device, but it doesn't factory reset or anything. And there's a mic up here if you don't want the external microphone connected i do use the external microphone anyhow so this is on the full brightness when i turn the headlights on you can see these come on and it dims the screen some so at night time you obviously want it dimmer and then it brightens back up again i don't know how much that's going to come through on the actual video but trust me it makes a big difference touch assist is this annoying little dot thing it's a little dot it'll just stay on the screen forever you can move it wherever you want to and you touch it and it gives you a bunch of options uh, I hate that thing. I turn it off. So we turn touch assist off. And that's off again, right? Alright, and then if you go to sound, ketone this makes noises when you push the screen. I was anything you touch the screen, volume is just the regular volume. Default notification alarm sound. I don't use either one of those because I don't get notifications. Screenshot could be if you wanted to take screenshots, you can install a button up there. I don't want to take screenshots. I never have. Storage is standard Android stuff. Uh, so you now you can see you can see this 32 gigabytes total storage. I'm using 15 so far, and I'm on portable micro SD card. I'm only using 2.7 gigabytes. 
I don't have a lot downloaded at this point. Security and location, standard. Uh, the only thing I have is find my device turned on for admin. There's no extra stuff in there. Uh, location turned on on high accuracy because we don't care about battery power, right? Accessibility, standard Android stuff. Uh, I don't use any of these things, but if you need them, they're there. All right, so here's where we get out of the standard Android stuff, at least for this car setting is. So this will be the head unit specific stuff. Element or the light colors here, right? So let's say I change it to red. See all the red now. Or if you want to turn it to blue, that can be blue. If you want green, they're green. Uh, I don't think any of them are super great for meeting Android or meeting like a Jeep color, but uh, the green I kind of like, so I'll stick with that. Uh, steering wheel keys, that's that wheel key button, essentially the same thing, it's just kind of a different location, so ignore that. Alright, uh, amplifier, that goes to your EQ. Do I have my fades that I thought was sounding weird? Alright. Uh, navigation, this is where, oh actually yeah, I don't really use this very much because I meet all my navigation apps because I don't like them popping up to me, but somewhere in here is what you would mess with if you wanted to change it so the the level, the volume of the voice with navigation, I don't know what navigation monitoring does. Navigation application options, that's where you set your nav for that navigation button. Sometimes there's a hard button here, but it's not, but is that navigation app built into the launcher itself. Sound mode here is where it would you would mix your audio in. So like say your music's playing at volume 25 and you don't want your turn left notification to be that loud, it'll blow your eardrums out, right? So you can adjust these volumes here. I mute all the navigation options, so I don't use these settings. But this is where you would do it. I don't know how to tell you to use it because I don't use it. But I think you can figure it out driving settings so watching video if you didn't have this check marked on you couldn't watch video right turn that on all of a sudden the law doesn't apply anymore just like the purge but in head uniform notifications uh i guess that would block these i never used that before so because i don't give a shit about no notifications while i'm driving it doesn't phase me extra settings so we're still in the car settings and the driving things are inside the car settings Extra settings, this is very important. Auto sleep. I go into detail about this in my boot video. Uh, I recommend watching that one. You can set this for different times. So like say I took the key out. If I set to 30 seconds, I turn the Jeep off, take the key out. I'm gone for 35 seconds. I come back, it goes to a full reboot section. If I have it set to auto sleep, I can turn the key off, leave for 10 minutes, two hours, come back turn it on and it's going to come right back on within seconds or else you're looking around the 30 second reboot time uh, this automatically play music when USB is I don't care about that because I don't keep reinserting those things reversing X mirror so this is if you put it in reverse like say your camera was backwards if I put uh, reversing X mirror now the van moved across the street, see? I don't want that. Reversing volume. Uh, I do like this. That means when you put it in reverse, it lowers the sound of the audio. So again, say your music's at volume 25, you put it in reverse, it lowers it down to five. Or it takes five down, so it's a little quieter, so you can focus a little more and you're backing up. Reversing trajectory, trajectory display, display. Reversing trajectory display. Turn that off. And no, it's still there. Alright, that does nothing. Rear view ruler. There you go. So we want the lines on. So the trajectory display does nothing. Uh rear view ruler rear view ruler makes those lines move come on or off. I like the lines there. It doesn't turn with you. I had one in the past that did do that, but this one does not. Factory settings is a whole other situation. You can really break some shit here, so be careful. 
Uh, the password is M123456, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so this is... I don't mess with any of this stuff. Car logo. So yeah, now my boots to a Jeep. You can change it to any kind of logo. This is where you want to change the logo if you want besides the Jeep logo. Radio, when you initially set it up, you do want to set this up to make sure it's set to America because it comes default on China or Russia or something. So you set it to America and you'll get better radio perception. Voice, this is where you can change the volume. Like say your Bluetooth. Say your Bluetooth is way louder or your radio is way louder than your Spotify. You could adjust these volumes here and kind of balance it out. Can bus adapter. There you go. Bagu. That's what I was trying to say. So this is where you would adjust things. Uh, like... No, it doesn't do it. I've had one in the past where it would tell you when the door is open and you could swap that here. Uh, you could change different devices. You can change your CAN bus. So this is a Bagoo. So that's the Bagoo I have. I not, I think I changed that because I had a bunch of them around. I wanted this little button to work. I've had so many head units. I have a bunch of these CAN bus adapters sitting around with me. So I think I have changed this to Bagoo. I think by default. But this tells you which brand it is. So Bagoo or Union or High World or Simple. If you buy it straight from the factory or from say Kane or eBay or whatever, it'll have it. It should be automatically programmed what yours are. You can try messing with them. It may change some functionality, but could break some shit. So uh, if you have a Bagoo, you can't make it as simple because it won't work and vice versa. For the, Again, they're not always the same CAN bus adapter, so you just got to look and see. Like I said, this is where you could break stuff. Same thing with key study. So if your calibration's off, you can adjust this stuff, but it can also really jack it up, so be careful with that. Other... I think if you turn the front camera on, it may enable one of the cords in the back. I don't know. I don't have a front camera hooked up yet, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, some of these stuff you change, it will. So, again, I don't mess with this stuff. You can. Uh, but just be warned if you mess with some of this shit, you could break it. If you change something, you have to hit apply and then exit, and then it will say machine is need reboot, which is funny. And then go through the full reboot process which is like 20 30 seconds right if you just don't change anything hit exit it goes right back to the screen you were before all of that is under the car settings of the actual settings of the head unit uh so google services is again just the android stuff going to your google account i'm not gonna look at that because on my google account you don't need to see my google account system language is an input that's where your keyboard is so your virtual keyboard android I change it to I change it to this hollow blue so it is those big blocky letters I can type on this big ass screen you may like different stuff but again that should be the standard Android settings right and if you wanted to change your language of course you could do that here as well date and time so this gets a little funky when you first start it the first time you get it I always have to go in here and change these things. So I don't know if I taped it on the install video or not. I don't remember because I've had so many of these. But a lot of times this shit will be set to China. So you'll need to turn off GPS automatic and turn off automatic. Manually set your time zone to the correct one. And then go back and turn it on automatic and it should work now. So like 9 stays. So 750 here it's 750 here as well. So it works just fine there. But it... it it does daylight savings time. Everything seems to work just fine once you get it set initially. I saw one guy on the Wrangler forum saying he had problems with it. Uh, none of mine have ever had any problems. Once you do that initial thing where you change it from the default time zone they have. But you got to turn all this shit off and do it manually. But once you do it manually, then it seems to work automatically just fine. Backup, that goes to your Google account. I don't really know if it works or not per se. Because uh, I never restore these from backup. Uh, MCU and system updates. This would be if you had an update available. Uh, I will caution you, this is a good way to brick your system if you don't know what you're doing. They post these things on XDA. Uh, St. Kane is not as good about posting their updates as to say this, because to say that I believe makes their own head units, whereas St. Kane, I think is just a reseller. If you were to get one of those, you would do those updates here. You'd have to install it on a thumb drive and install them. I have not done any updates to this one, because it works just fine. Other than that one Wi-Fi bug, I haven't really had any problems with it. Uh, reset as if you want to do a full factory reset you would do it here about machine that tells you your model your android version your super up-to-date android security patch level build number mcu version serial number so here's where you would want to 
This is your MCE version, MTCE underscore HF. Some of them are cross compatible and some of them are not. So if you found an update for MTCE underscore HF underscore V2.9 or two or V3 even, that should work. If you have an MTCE underscore HA, which is with the, the SATA hot audio ones, it might work or it might break your head unit. So just be leery of that. Uh, same thing with the build number. So this HCT 2018-0504, uh, essentially that means this is made in May of 04. So if you can find a new version where most of these numbers line up, except for the dates change, then that's going to be the one you want to do. But if something's way different, like if it's not OPR5, if it's JK247, I don't know, I'm just making up numbers here, but you could really break your shit. And say K is not going to help you if you break it by installing the wrong software. So... You can try it. It's just not recommended, right? And essentially, that's everything, right? So we've gotten a very detailed overview of this head unit. I think for probably an hour of recording here so far. Yeah, 58 minutes so far, essentially, other than some mess-ups. I think I've covered everything. Uh, again, it's basically an Android tablet that's into your head unit. It works with your phone over Bluetooth. It doesn't matter if you have an Android phone or an iPhone. It's going to work fine. If you're wanting to plug your phone in there and replicate your phone on the head unit, I don't recommend that. It will work for some of them. You can even get that little CarPlay adapter thing, which I have tried and have a video on as well. It's just not optimal, right? You're not looking for this, probably. If you want Android in your dash, where I can play, like this is a just a playlist I have in Google Play Music. So I can just hit this playlist it takes me to google play music of 600 something songs i think are just good to play in the jeep 30. you can swipe the screen like that right i got my bass problem but so i like that you can swipe the screen so you can thumbs up stuff just like google play music right you can pause it there. Oh, here. So here's what I was saying. So see the music is paused right now. If I scroll over here, and as soon as I hit this button right here, here's my other hand, right? No magic hand business. Now the music's playing. Uh, this may not be for you, obviously, but... And then the controls in the back work as well. So now I'm going to hit the button on the back of the steering wheel to change the track. Play pause, make it work. The button's on the back of the steering wheel here. Turn the volume up or down. You can slide the songs over here, right? There's lots of stuff you can do with these head units. It makes it a very enjoyable experience. Uh, I highly recommend them. I've had plenty of them. In full disclosure, I am going to test out a, Sa a Sony Android Auto head unit. That's just because uh, I like messing around with this kind of shit. So, but I'm also going to keep one of these and I'll have it back set up. So this is, again, this one came out last year. There's a newer version with Android 9.0. However, uh, they should all have the same general functionality. It's just going to be a better processor, essentially, right? So this one works fine. As long as you have one with 4 gigabytes of RAM, an octa-core processor it runs fairly smoothly right i don't have any complaints about this head unit it works pretty great uh all right so i think i've rambled on long enough uh i highly recommend them we're pretty good both to say and say king but this one attached had to be a say king all right thanks for checking me out if you have any questions leave it in the comments uh and i'll try to answer you quickly and there'll be links to all this stuff in the description as well so check it out all right thanks